Good day, everyone. It gives me great joy once again to see you in this video. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about study population or population of study. This is a very important component of research methodology. So this is in continuation of the series uh, that we started on research methodology. So and this um, study population or population of study is very important. It's a very important component of research methodology because this is where you describe you define and analyze the population you conducted your study on. And it's very important because I've seen so many research reports, so many theses, so many dissertations, so many projects without clearly defined, uh, or without clearly defining or clearly defined study population. In the, and this is very, very, inappropriate in the sense that if I you see some re research reports without even talking about the study population at all or population of study at all and you want and you sometimes want them to wonder how or why this is the case because without understanding the study population then it's very difficult to make sense of, of the of the research altogether. So whether you are on your PhD or you are your master's or you are undergraduate or you are a professional or a consultant or an organization simply conducting research, you must clearly define and explain, uh, and explain the study population. Because essentially, it is very important for us to understand the reliability or the validity of the, of the research it enables us to understand and make sense of the findings or the research process. Research is one, it's a fractal process in the sense that one must lead to the other and we must understand every component to be able to understand the research as a whole. So, and it's very related, study population is related to your research design. From your research design, you know, don't forget, I, I also dropped a video on research design, I mean, research setting or study area, then now we're talking about study population. So you see the flow. And for example, if you're doing experimental or you're doing longitudinal or you have done qualitative data or quantitative data collection or, or, or you have done observation or even longitudinal, within this process, we must understand the population you are interested in. Beyond describing the study population, we also want to understand the why you have chosen that study population and the how you have chosen that population and what the study population is all about. So simply put, then what is study population or population of study if this is so important? The study population is, is a subset of the total population. Is, is, the, is the population that you have carefully chosen or identified as relevant to understanding the problem you are interested in. It's a subset, it's a component of a bigger population. Sometimes this study, the population you have chosen, your study population, may share semblance with the total population, may share the same characteristic or identical characteristics with the total population. And sometimes, that is very important if you want to generalize to the total population. And sometimes, it may not necessarily share any characteristic. It may just be a unique, a special group of people from a total population. So it may not share the general characteristics of the total population. This is particularly very common in qualitative study, or even or in longitudinal study, or even in observational study. But when you do survey, sometimes we expect that your study population may have to share general characteristics with the population because you may want to generalize. But in exploratory study or descriptive study, sometimes this may not be so. There may not be any need for your study population to share characteristics with the general population because you may not be interested in, the general, in, the, in generalizing or generalization to the general population. You just want to understand the, this unique population. For example, if you, are, if, if you are adopting experimental study design, you, you may want to consider, for example, your study population to be that, the, to be the group of people that you have selected or that have volunteered 
to be participants in your, clini in, in your clinical trials. So when you are doing clinical trials, you may consider those people that you'll be using for the trial as your study population. For example, again, if you are within the context of conflict studies or in, 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 in relation to insurgency or, or war or displacement, you may want to consider victims of insurgency, of conflict, victims alone as your study, as your study population, rather than the whole community affected by conflict or humanitarian disaster. Also, if you may even want to go further and say, okay, your study population will be females affected by conflict or insurgency. That, do you have, I mean, therefore, the female or, or the females that you, are choose, that you have chosen may then become your study population. It may also be male. Maybe so, maybe intervention studies. Maybe, maybe those people that are affected. You may say those are affected and those are not affected if you are doing the experimental study. So this small group of people, depending on how large, I'm only using the word small in the sense that you are interested in a smaller proportion of the general population. So this is usually what we mean by study population. But it's very study population. But it's very important for you to know that you must justify the reasons why the reasons you have chosen this subset from the total population. And you must be clear, are you generalizing or are you not gen or are you not generalizing? So we are able to make sense of, of to understand your mindset and to better appreciate your research. So justification in terms of why you have chosen the study population and how you did this the you arrived at the at the selection or identification and what the population knows about in terms of describing. So this is very important. It's not just about writing about the whole group of people in that place. It's not even about writing about the group you have selected, but justifying and explaining and characterizing for us to clearly see and say, wow, this is very important. Because this will determine the reliability and validity of the work. It's also very important, note this point, if you clearly define or explain your study population, it will, uh, it will assist you as a researcher and your reader understand your eligibility criteria in the sense that one is able to be clear and even you as a researcher will be clear okay the, who is eligible for my study but if you do and i've seen many students or, or many students or organizations or researchers having problem in terms of eligibility they are not able to clearly uh, determine the eligibility because this is because they have not clearly been able to establish a boundary social boundary research boundary of their study population. So they are confused. And this will also determine, this is also very important, will assist you to clearly determine your inclusion criteria. Who should, you, who should you include in the population and why and how? But if you clearly demarcate or identify your study population, then your eligibility inclusion criteria is, is clearly set in a way that you then continue to enjoy, enjoy yourself. So you see, if you look at the way I've been explaining this, you've seen this study population now as uh, as it, it relates to research design, your study popular, uh, your your data collection approach, even your analysis. You are clear on uh, in your analysis, and it's, you must justify all of this, and you must explain all of this. So if you go through this way, I'm sure in your next study or the one you are even conducting, you will be able to clearly appreciate your study population and be, be ha, and have good grasp of your study right from the beginning to the end even when you are recommending eventually when you are even identifying your contribution to knowledge eventually when you are even explaining your findings eventually when you are concluding when you are summarizing when you are discussing you are discussing in proper context based on your clear understanding of your study population or population of study i hope this, this, this will help you in the future as you, as you continue in your research. Until you become an expert, we will not rest. We will continue to add value to you. Until I see you in the next video, kindly subscribe to this channel for more wonderful contents. Share widely, comment, and like. And I do sincerely wish you well. Till I see you next time, be the best.